All right, there we go. So welcome to our tech talk for today. Um, our topic today will be cutting the cord, which may be something that you've heard of in the past. It's definitely something that's been in the news and been discussed over the last several years. Um, so we'll delve into what cutting the cord actually is. It doesn't actually mean taking a pair of scissors to your cable cord, as tempting as that might be. We'll talk about all of the different options that are out there um, if you are looking to get rid of cable, including how to actually connect them to your TV, because I know that's one question that a lot of people have had. This is uh, one of our tech talks. So in our previous lives, um, we did present this live at the library in person. So you may have seen this before if you've taken some of our classes or heard us mention it. My name is Anne. I'm a technology trainer with the library. Um, you've heard my coworker and I, um, my coworker Jackie and I, regularly on Facebook Live, or maybe this is the first time you're tuning in. We have been doing these tech talks, so our lectures on timely technology topics um, for the last couple, last month or so. And we also have a lot of appy hours, so discussions of specific apps um, that generally are free and available for your mobile devices. We've got a ton of those going all the way back to April, actually, on the Facebook page. So all of these Facebook Live events are recorded, and they are available on the library's Facebook page and on our YouTube channel as well. So if you miss them live, no worries. Unlike our in-person classes, you can actually check out recordings of them. Um, so you can go back and listen to them, recommend them to friends. Um, so let's see. Looks like we've got some people watching. So we'll go ahead and dive into cutting the cord. So first off, what is cutting the cord? Cutting the cord is essentially cutting out your cable bill, getting rid of traditional cable in favor of an internet-based option to keep you entertained, especially right now when we're spending more times at home. Um, you may need something to replace the TV shows you've watched previously or the DVDs you've gotten from the library. So there are a lot of good options out there that we'll talk about. Now, one important thing to remember with cutting the cord is that we are not cutting out every single cord. There's one very important cord that we need to keep around, and that's your internet connection. So often, your cable company is also your internet service provider. You pay them for both your cable and your internet service, as well as maybe your landline phone as well. You may not be able to get rid of them entirely, but you can at least cut out the cable portion of your bill because we absolutely need the internet in order for these options to work. If you're trying to run them off of a smartphone, off of data, it's going to eat up your data plan really, really quickly. So we still need the internet to work. There are, of course, a variety of reasons why people are cutting the cord. Um, one major one is generally it's cheaper. Cable has gotten really, really expensive, and we are looking for cheaper options. So some of the options we'll talk about get up toward those cable prices, but there's also some other advantages too. There's a lot more variety out there. A lot of the video streaming services we'll talk about, places like Netflix or Hulu, they have a ton of shows that aren't available on traditional cable. They're only available through Netflix because Netflix put up the money for those particular shows or Hulu or Amazon Prime. So there's a ton of variety and these are shows that are winning awards, movies that are winning awards. So there's just a lot more stuff out there. You can also watch on your own schedule. You're not stuck with starting a show at 7 p.m. on the dot because that's when it airs on a specific channel. You can pick and choose, you can pause in the middle, you can come back to things later, you can rewatch things. It just gives us a lot more flexibility. Depending on the option that you actually choose, there may be entirely no commercials with a service or very limited commercials. You're, you can actually get through shows faster. A 30 minute show is actually closer to like 21, 22 minutes when you cut out all the commercials. This is also portable. You can watch these shows, these 
movies, documentaries, etc. on a smartphone, on a tablet. You can take it on vacation, although that's not happening so much anymore. But this is very portable, and you can also share it with other people. Um, so if you have multiple family members, you can all use the same account and actually keep your, your shows, your preferences separate. Um, and that doesn't need to be people living in the same house as you. That could be people across the country, potentially. And another super appealing thing, if you've had to deal with cable, is that you can cancel at any time. These are monthly recurring charges on a credit card or through PayPal. And they don't put up a fight when you cancel. You click on a couple of links on the website and you can cancel at any time. You can also pick things back up. So you could pick up a specific service for a couple of months to watch a show and then cancel it again, depending on what you're interested in. Now, in terms of price, there are actually kind of two streaming services or two kind of tiers or versions of streaming services that we'll talk about today. For video streaming, you're looking about probably an average about $10 a month. Netflix and HBO, those services tend a little bit higher, but there are definitely ones that are cheaper. That's how averages work. Um, we also, if you are looking to replace cable with more of a traditional way to watch TV with specific channels, you want to be able to watch sports and things like that. There are internet-based TV options now too. We'll talk about those in a little bit. And those start at about $50 a month. The prices are definitely going higher with those. Um, so it might be closer to like 55 at this point, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. I should also mention if you have any questions, you can drop them in the comment box. Um, my coworker Jackie is keeping an eye on it. I'm keeping an eye on it too. Um, so if you have any questions, you can put them over there. All right, so I kind of mentioned the two different types of streaming services that are out there. I tend to break these into video streaming and TV streaming. And what you choose for you, and you can mix and match. You could have both a TV streaming service and multiple video streaming services too. You could have multiple video, video streaming services and still have cable as well. That's really common. But it really depends on how you watch things or what types of things that you actually watch. So if you're someone who likes revisiting movies, um, going back to past seasons of TV shows, catching up with things that are off the air now, but you, you didn't get a chance to see them or seeing old favorites, video streaming would be a good option for you. That has a large catalog of things typically that aren't airing right now, um, but their, their catalog is vast. There's a ton of stuff available. If you're okay waiting for new seasons of shows, there's often a several month delay be be between when a show finishes a season and when it's added to those video streaming services. If you're okay with that wait, you don't mind spoilers or you're good at avoiding spoilers, you can certainly go with one of the video streaming options. Also, if you're interested in those streaming exclusives, the things that are on Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime that are only available there, you don't see them on standard cable, then video streaming's for you. These are also generally cheaper options um, because they have their own catalog. They aren't relying on specific channels or deals with um, different broadcast networks or anything like that. TV streaming, on the other hand, is for folks who still like channel surfing. You like having the TV on. You want to be able to flip from channel to channel. If you're not so good with spoilers, you want to be able to watch shows right when they air so you can discuss with people, so you can keep up with things. And also, if you want to keep up with sports and local news, TV streaming is pretty much going to be your only option for that. Video streaming doesn't really have that since those occur live, of course. Now, video streaming is kind of similar to old school blockbuster or walking into the AV room here at the library and being able to pick whatever you want off the shelves. 
There's a wide variety of stuff available, wide variety of genres, and these will be some familiar names potentially in video streaming. So with this, you will pay a monthly fee um, for access to a huge catalog of options. You can watch as much as you want over the course of that particular month. You can set up multiple profiles, so multiple people essentially who can watch under the same account. The number is going to vary from service to service and potentially from plan to plan within each, each service, but that makes sure that your favorite show stays separate from your significant other's favorite shows, stays separate from the kids' favorite shows, and does allow you to kind of share the price then if you're sharing with people who can contribute to that monthly subscription fee, then you pay a little bit less and everybody gets to share access to things. So these are a couple of familiar names. So first up, we of course have Netflix, which has one of the biggest catalogs. Um, they have a ton of stuff, a ton of original content as well. That's not going to be things that are currently airing. Those are things that have already aired. They've already been off TV for a little bit. Hulu is another big name in video streaming, so they sometimes do have shows the day after they air. They have a big deal with um, the channel FX right now, um, so a lot of things that air on FX, like Fargo right now, um, will be on Hulu the next day. So you don't even have to pay for cable, you can still keep up with those shows just with a, a day's delay. If you have Amazon Prime, um, you have access to a streaming service. It's Prime Video. They have a ton of original content as well. This is where Fleabag and Transparent are. Um, Prime Video gets a little confusing because there are paid options, things that you can purchase through Amazon as well and separate channels. Um, but if you see the free with Prime label and you have Amazon Prime, you can watch it for free. It's included. HBO Max is actually pretty new on the scene. HBO's had a number of different versions of streaming services, but HBO Max combines HBO content with um, Warner Brothers. So they have a ton of stuff on there. Um, it is one of the more expensive ones. I think it's closer to $15 a month. The other ones are between like six to 12, six to 15. Um, but you do get a lot of content, including everything that HBO's put out, essentially. We are seeing more network channels um, put out their own streaming services as well. So CBS All Access was really the first. Um, they're kind of notable because the new Star Trek show, Star Trek Discovery, well, new, it's been around for a couple of seasons, is exclusive to them. It doesn't air on CBS. It's only through their streaming service. Peacock is also pretty new. Peacock's kind of nice. It's from NBC. Um, they have a free tier, actually, so you can sign up for free and watch a lot of NBC shows. It does include commercials, though. Anything that's free is probably going to include commercials. Um, and then we see a lot of streaming services with plus in the name. Um, so Disney Plus has been around for almost a year. Um, it is of course, all sorts of Disney content, but also has all the Star Wars stuff, Marvel, National Geographic. They have a ton of stuff. It's really good if you have kids because you have access to all of the Disney movies. Apple TV Plus is content straight from Apple. Unlike some of the other options, it's really only things that are produced by Apple. So documentaries and shows and movies, you aren't going to see something that was on Netflix at one point or was on network TV or cable TV on Apple TV Plus. It's just original content. And there also are cable channels, things like BET has BET Plus. So depending on what you watch, you may want to investigate to see if they have a specific streaming service, if that's what you really, really want to watch. Now, if you are trying to replace cable in terms of switching between channels, you want to be able to watch the NBA Finals or the Browns or any other sports events, you want to keep up with current news, then you may want to look at a TV streaming option. 
So these, as we mentioned, is they're a little bit more expensive, um, but they do kind of replicate that cable experience with specific channels. It's not like channel three that you would turn to, but you would be able to choose from a listing, just like you're, you're used to with cable. So these are some of the big names in TV streaming. So Sling TV. Sling is nice because it starts, I think, at about $25 or $30 um, for a pretty good set of channels. Um, you, of course, do want to look up the channel listings, what channels are available with all of these options to make sure you are getting what you want. For example, YouTube TV um, is a really good option, but currently they don't have access to our local sports. Um, so our local Fox stations, they don't have access to them. Other ones of these services may have access to them. Hulu actually shows up again here. Hulu does have a live TV option. Um, so you can pay a specific monthly price and get access to the live TV plus their catalog of shows that you would pay for separately if you, you just got the, the video streaming service. AT&T has its own streaming service called AT&T TV Now. Philo is a good option. It's a cheaper option if you don't need sports. Um, sports really, really inflate the prices of both cable and these TV streaming services. So if you don't need that, you don't need sports in your life, then Philo can be one to check out. And Fubo TV, on the other hand, is if you really, really like sports, they have a ton of channels, including soccer and, and stuff like that, available. Now, one question that we get a lot, especially when we were teaching this in person, is, okay, great, I've signed up for Netflix. How do I actually get it on my TV? Because these are streaming services, and like we mentioned, we can't cut out the internet cord, um, you do need some way to connect your TV to the internet, essentially. It's really easy on smartphones and tablets and laptops and desktops because those are really easily connected to the internet. That's how we check our email. That's how we watch YouTube videos. That's kind of what they're used for. TVs get a little bit more complicated, though. But there are a number of different options, and they don't necessarily mean you have to go out and buy a new TV. Now, the simplest option is something called an HDMI cord. You may already have one of these at home. Um, they're common to connect things like gaming consoles or DVD players to your TV. Or if you have a projector at home, this is often used to connect a projector to a laptop. So one end will go into a computer. So you will need a computer that pretty much just use for streaming and when it's connected to the TV. You can, of course, use it for other things when it's not connected to the TV. One end goes into the computer, the other end goes into the TV, and it does effectively mirror what's on your computer screen. So it acts as an external monitor. Um, these can be a little bit tough to navigate because the cursor gets really small. But if you're just trying out streaming services, um, you sign up for a free trial of Netflix and want to see if you like the content and want to watch it on a TV, this can be a good option. These range in price. Um, can probably find them from five to 15, maybe 20 bucks at Target or Walmart or um, pretty much anywhere <laughs> that sells electronic things. So it can be a good first step in streaming if that's all you need. Another thing to mention, not that I'm recommending going out and buying a gaming console, but if you have a gaming console in the house, if you have an Xbox, if you have a PS4, um, or coming soon, I'm going to need to update these with the new generation of consoles. Those can stream pretty much any of the streaming services we've mentioned today. This is actually how I watch the majority of my streaming content is through a PS4. Um, so you don't need something separate if you have something like this. If you are in the market for a new TV um, and we've got, you know, Prime Day coming up, Black Friday coming up. Purchasing a smart TV 
kind of takes the headaches out of figuring out how to connect your current TV to the internet. So smart TVs, you connect them to your wireless internet connection. They have apps kind of similar to the apps on your smartphone or on your tablet. So we can see here in this picture, there's a Netflix app, there's a Hulu app. This doesn't include that subscription, um, of course, so you will need to sign up separately for a Netflix account. You can't just hit on Netflix when you buy, when you buy the TV and have access to Netflix. But once you're signed in with your username and password, you just choose Netflix and it automatically opens that. One thing we are coming across with the smart TVs is they aren't getting a ton of updates. And if you've ever had a phone or a computer or a tablet reach kind of the end of its lifespan, it won't get updates anymore. You know that sometimes they kind of stop working <laughs> and we're running into kind of the first several generations of smart TVs not really working because these apps are constantly being updated um, elsewhere, but not on these particular TVs. So something to keep in mind. The potentially easiest option, the most affordable option, if you are especially outfitting multiple TVs or if you don't want to have to connect your computer to a TV every time you want to stream, is a streaming box. Um, these come in a variety of different forms. Roku is a good option because they don't really care what you stream. Um, they will work with most streaming services. There have been some caveats lately. Um, Peacock took a long time to get on to Roku. There are other streaming services that aren't on Roku because of licensing legal stuff behind the scenes. But generally, they're my recommendation because they are pretty cheap. They start at $25, $30. Bucks. Um, they go up in price, certainly, but you don't need a super expensive device. They will connect to your TV, so you don't need to replace the TV, and it does all the the thinking for you, essentially. It turns your dumb TV into a smart TV and lets you access all of those streaming services. Another version of this is the Amazon Fire TV stick. Um, they also have a variety of different forms. Generally, with technology, it's easiest if you match company to company. So if you use a lot of Prime Video, for example, Amazon might be a good option for you because, of course, it's going to work really, really well since both products are for Amazon. Amazon and Google tend to butt heads a lot. It took a long time for YouTube and YouTube TV, those types of things, to actually be added to the Amazon Fire TV. And technically, um, they could pull those apps at any time. So something to keep in mind. The Google Chromecast is also an option. This is, of course, from Google, so plays well with Google devices. One nice thing with the Chromecast device is you can broadcast pretty much anything that's on a computer screen or on a, a phone or tablet screen from that device to your TV. It doesn't need to be Netflix. It doesn't need to be um, Hulu or any of those other services. It could be vacation pictures that you want to show off, although we don't have a ton of those right now. <laughs> Um, it could be um, streaming music from your phone or a video from some other source to your TV. So it does give you that flexibility. should mention both the Amazon Fire TV stick and the Chromecast starts at about $30. Um, so around the same price as the Roku. There is also the Apple TV. Um, so separate from Apple TV Plus, there's the Apple TV, which is the actual physical device. Um, this, of course, is going to play best with Apple things. Um, so if you're really into that ecosystem, you use Siri a lot. Siri's built into this remote, so you can talk to her and, and actually get her to open up the show, choose the show for you. Um, these are more expensive, though. Um, these start at about $150, which is much, much higher than any of the previous options, but it is out there, and if you're invested in it, you can certainly check them out. Now, if you are only in interested in network TV, so things that you can get over the air, um, 
things like ABC, NBC, CBS, you're interested in PBS, PBS does have a partnership with YouTube TV, which we mentioned in the TV streaming service, but if you just want to make sure you get these channels, that's all you need, there is a much cheaper option out there for you that doesn't require a monthly subscription fee. And that's an antenna. So you may still have an antenna up in your house. Um, you can certainly plug that back into your TV and see if it works. Um, there are also antennas like this um, where they are used inside your house. You don't need to climb on the roof or climb into the attic. Um, I watched most of the 2016 NBA Finals with one of these antennas around the corner from our TV propped on our dog's crate because that was di the direction that the signal was coming from. Um, so they start at 20 bucks. You don't need to pay a monthly fee. Over-the-air feeds are completely free. And if you are interested in what channels are available over the air through these antennas, my coworker Joe has a blog post on our website, so heightslibrary.org, where you can see all of the different channels. It's not going to be exactly the same as cable, um, but if you want to revisit favorite shows from the past or um, interesting documentary channels or things like that, there are some things out there that are freely available. You just need an antenna to capture them and watch them. So that is an option if you are really just looking for those kind of basic network channels and things like PBS. Finally, I have some shameless plugs for other things we've done on Facebook Live. So I did a free TV um, at the hour a couple months ago at this point. Um, so you can go back and look for that on the library's Facebook page. Um, it's listed under the Live tab. So it does include things like Sony Crackle, IMDb, IMDb TV. That is not easy to say. Pluto TV, Roku Channel, Tubi, and I mentioned Peacock as well. That was right when Peacock came out. Um, so these are all free options. You can watch them completely for free. Um, Pluto's kind of nice. You can channel surf without having to pay for anything. Um, but there are, of course, ads. There are limitations. Um, so I talk more about that in that particular happy hour. And Jackie actually just last week did a an happy hour talking about free TV and movies from the library. Um, so we have a ton of digital collections that are available to you 24-7 as it says here. You just need your library card to access things like Acorn TV, which is actually a separate paid streaming service. I could have added that to our list of video streaming services that specializes in British TV. Um, there's also Canopy, which has a ton of movies, IndieFlix, which has independent films and documentaries. If you're missing concerts, Stingray Kello has recorded concerts from a wide variety of genres. But Jackie talks about that more in our Happy Hour presentation from last week. So if you're interested in that, you can definitely check it out. I think at this point, if anybody has any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments. And I'll hang out for a little bit and answer any questions that arise. Like I mentioned a couple of times throughout, um, these Facebook Live presentations, we are here weekly. Um, every Wednesday at 4 p.m., one of the tech trainers will be here to talk about either a tech talk or one of our happy hour sessions. Um, so you can, you can always check the Facebook page to see what topic we're going to talk about. If you do end up missing those presentations, they are recorded and you can check them out either here on Facebook or on YouTube as well. I see Jackie's been in the comments um, asking if anyone's currently subscribed to a streaming service or thinking of subscribing to one. I have access to most of the streaming services that I talked about um, in this presentation, so I kind of use a lot of them.
All right. I don't see any questions coming in. So I think I'll go ahead and end this video. Um, and you can, of course, check it out. Check out our other, other presentations on the library's Facebook page. So thank you and have a good day.